Hey everybody, it's Rob Nazarian with Talk Android, and uh, we have uh, Lollipop here on board on the Nexus 5, and we wanted to uh, show you Trusted Devices, which is brand new for Lollipop. Really cool feature. It allows you to, um, as you know, we should always lock your device uh, with a pin code um, or a pattern, and uh, we know it's a pain. Google knows it's a pain. Who wants to constantly hit your pin code every time you unlock lock? unlock your device which you probably do over a hundred times a day so if you can say if I'm connected to a Bluetooth device um, or something else uh, then leave it unlocked like say your watch uh, is a perfect example so if my phone is connected to my watch then bingo let's uh, keep it unlocked because I know it's safe with me but if I leave my phone at the restaurant and walk out and the watch is no longer connected then put the lock screen back in effect. So right now, I have a lock screen in place, a pin code, very simple, one, two, three, four right now. I don't recommend that code. <laughs> this isn't my daily phone. And uh, so in order to do this, now, when you, when you first pair a Bluetooth, we're gonna start with Bluetooth right now as the first example. Uh, you can do Bluetooth, NFC, uh, an NFC tag, or a face unlock, which I'll explain. Why there's no Wi-Fi is mind-boggling. Uh, that should really be um, a given, especially your home Wi-Fi network. Set that as safe. You don't need to lock your device, maybe, when you're connected to your home Wi-Fi and uh, or work Wi-Fi, depending on your, your work environment. But uh, Google didn't add that. Maybe they will add that in the future. Incidentally, Moto, the Moto X, which is doing this for uh, since the, for about a year now, uh, Trusted Devices with Bluetooth does not offer Wi-Fi either, so there must be a reason but I use delayed lock for that, um, and, and that app works great with all phones. Obviously, this is only on Lollipop built in. But when you first pair a Bluetooth device, you're going to get a notification to actually add that as a smart lock device. Uh, so your car, a Bluetooth would work, a headset, whatever, and or a smartwatch. So you'll have that uh, option right now. I'm not going to go through that, but you can tap on that and um, go through and it will add it as a trusted device. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the settings and you're going to go down the security. So here's the top. It was already set it to security. I'm going to move down, go to security. And you'll see, uh, now you're, you have to have a screen lock in place in order to, to be able to choose smart lock. So if you, re, if you have a slide to unlock, uh, smart lock doesn't make any sense. It's not a choice. So assuming you have a pin or pattern lock, a password, whatever, in place, you'll then have this smart lock feature. And you'll have to then uh, put in your code, enter your code, 1234. Again, I wouldn't recommend that. And you'll see here, trusted devices uh, have none, and trusted faces disa disabled, because it's not really a device. <laughs> so I'm going to go to trusted devices, and it's mentioning that you can do Bluetooth or NFC. And all you do is hit the plus sign to add something, and it's asking me, do I want a Bluetooth or NFC? Uh, again, your device needs to have been paired in order to do the Bluetooth. And the, and the NFC, it'll proceed, and I'll show you that in a bit, proceed to, to, uh, to put in a tag. So I'm going to go Bluetooth, and right now it's showing this, this headset that I have right here. Um, and it's not connected, which is fine. It's not connected at the moment, but I can add it. So it's already in. Go hit the back key. It's already listed as a trusted device. Now you can add more devices, but right now I'm just adding this. So right now it's not on, as, we, as, it, as it was showed. It's not connected, so my lock screen is in place. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. Okay, there's the light, and it should pair in about a second. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And now if I turn it on, whoops, the lock screen is no more. So pretty cool. So as long as it's connected to this, I'll have no lock screen. And like I said, this was great for the car. So that way, I know you're not supposed to use your phone a lot in the car, but hey, who wants to fumble the lock screen if you're going to? Now one thing, and now I'm going to go ahead and turn it off as if we walked away or it got disconnected. So if I left the phone in the restaurant and walked out with my headset, the lock screen will go right back into place. So if somebody picks up my phone, now they have the lock screen. Now one thing I want to mention, and I think Google missed a boat on here, I'm going to actually turn off the device 
and pair it. Turn it on, and this, so the light will go on, it's going to pair. Now what's going to happen here is it's going to unlock a, a right away. And in my opinion, with the device off and when something pairs with it, you should still have to hit the lock screen one more time to verify. I know it's far-fetched, but if somebody knows you well and, and, and knows uh, of a device uh, to pair it with or something or to go near your smartwatch or whatever, uh, they can then, un your device will be unlocked. But in this method here, you should have one more time and with Delayed Lock, the Delayed Lock app that works with a bunch of different phones, not just Lollipop, you do have to type in that code or enter your password or, or do your pattern one time. So I do think Google missed a boat on that, but, uh, but, I, but I still would recommend using it because it, it's still a far-fetched situation. Now, the, there's one other thing I want to show you I completely forgot, and that is with the Bluetooth. I'm going to turn on the Bluetooth. Okay, the light is on, so the device should be unlocked now. It's not going to detect my face anyway. I mean, its face should be, uh, or should be unlocked. Now, what happens is you can do this too. You can hit, you can tap on the on the uh, padlock icon there, and you can temporarily lock it for whatever reason. If you think you're in public or you're scared or whatever, so what you do is tap this. Device will stay locked until you manually unlock. So now the device is actually locked, even though it's connected to the Bluetooth, and there it is. Bingo. So that works well. I'm going to go ahead and, and turn that off. And just to show it one more time, because I'm going to go to NFC now. And it is locked. Okay. So now, NFC tags. I'm, I'm surprised they actually implemented this, because this to me is a little useless as well. And most people don't even utilize NFC tags. But here's an NFC tag uh, sticker uh, as an example. You can put this anywhere. Your nightstand, your car, or whatever. So we're going to go in the settings, and we're going to go in the same spot under security and smart lock, and we're going to of course have to put our code in, and we're going to go to uh, trusted devices, and we're going to add something, and we're going to add NFC this time. Now what we have to do is tap it over, and there it is. Now I'm going to name it, and we'll just call it, I'm going to call it the car for now. It's going to be my sticker I'm going to put in the car. Okay. So now that is added, and um, I, you can see now I have multiple devices that's showing the car and the, and the headset. So now it's sitting on the NFC tag, so right now it should be unlocked. Oh, and it's not. That's not because I have to do it again. All right, so actually the phone is on. There we go. So now it's going to be unlocked. So now while it's sitting on this tag, it's going to be unlocked. But if I remove it from the tag, that's far enough anyway, it has to be close. If I remove it from the tag, it's now, uh, it's now locked. Which really is kind of strange because who's going to leave a phone on a tag? Even in your car, you're going to pick it up to do something with, um, which I guess it's fine, you'll have to slide it before you pick it up, I don't know. Now, the other thing is, um, if the phone is in the off position, it's generally not going to pick up the tag. I've seen it where it does, but majority of the time it doesn't. So you're going to have to turn on the device in order, um, which means turn it on and unlock it in order to put it on the tag, which I guess that's a security uh, precaution, but I have seen that it does accept it at times. Um, if somebody knows your tag, um, they could just go up to the tag and it will be unlocked. So that's actually a pretty good measure. So right now I just unlocked it. We'll turn it off and I'll put it on the tag. So you're not going to hear a tone anyway. It's on it and I'm going to go ahead and flick it up and there it is. The code is still there. And then the tone hits. But again, in order for it to work, it has to sit on this um, on this tag and it, to me it just is kind of useless. So, that's the tag. Now, the other thing is, and let's go to, and I'm going to do it briefly here, is, um, whoops, security and smart lock. 
So right now we have those two devices, but nothing is in effect, so it's the, the screen is locked. We're going to go Trusted Face. Now this is just like Face Unlock, except Face Unlock is now moved away from the normal security. You can't unlock the device with your face anymore. It never worked all that well anyway. But you can go in and add your face um, as, a, as a third or fourth or fifth option just for the heck of it, I guess. And as long as you're picking up the phone, it'll work. But, of course, if you have your watch or whatever, it'll bypass it anyway. But So I wouldn't recommend just using your face. But you can go through and do this uh, setup. You still would, um, you're still going to have your code as a backup. And uh, I don't know if it'll work here underneath the camera. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's not going to work here with the camera, but let me see if I can set it up here off the screen. Okay. It took the face, and now I'm going to hit next. The problem is the camera's in front here, so it's going to—it's not going to detect my face too well. Um, but what's going to happen is, um, um, it's now it's, it's, it's now enabled saying trusted face. So right now what will happen is when you turn on your device, it's going to automatically look for your fa face and you're going to swipe up anyway and hopefully it's going to catch it in time. So in the old days, you kind of held it there and waited till the face, re you know, read your face and all this. But you're going to still swipe up and right now it didn't detect my face. But let me try it off the camera here and see if it, and I'll tell you if it works. I'm sorry, I had to hit the code that time as well. So... It, do, it does work fairly well, though. I did try was trying it last night in a regular room, regular lighting. And then the other thing that you can do is also is refine it more. So if you go into Trusted Face, you can reset the face or improve face matching, take more images in different lights. So you can try that as well. And if you want to delete devices... You just go into Smart Lock again. It's pretty easy. You go into here. So you can get rid of the car, which is a tag, or the um, headset. So I'll just tap on that and then remove it. Yes, it's done. It's gone. And the um, headset remains. So that is Smart Lock. It works uh, very good. So um, I would definitely use that when you get Lollipop. Hopefully the other Android manufacturers will include that. I'm sure they will as part of their um, Lollipop versions that they uh, install with their skins. So, um, but I still like delayed lock because it allows for Wi-Fi. But again, if you're going to have a smartwatch, which I know everybody is, that does it right there. Um, but one thing, I, I don't like using it to something I have connected all the time. And the reason why is I like to know that it's working. So I use my Wi-Fi with uh, the delayed lock app and Bluetooth in the car and stuff and that even adds location as another option but when I'm out and about somewhere in public then I have my lock screen and yeah, it's a little bit of a pain but I know it's kind of working if it's connected to my watch all the time and I never see my lock screen I feel like ah, maybe it's not going to really work <laughs> but it does work well I haven't seen a failure once so uh, definitely give it a shot I hope this video helps you thanks for watching look for more stuff on Android Lollipop and uh until next time, this is Rob Nazarian with Talk Android.